Hey guys, it's good to be back and off of those operators and uh, all of those sub videos for section seven or video area seven, uh, where we dived very deeply, almost 15, 16 videos into dealing with just operators. So now we're back and now we're talking about average, max, min, standard, dev, p, sum, and var p. And so I'm gonna keep this really, really simple, but I need you to understand that this can get and is a lot more complicated than I've made this look. So I have a couple of input box. I'm calling this one input A or INPT, I'm abbreviating it. And then this one is just input B. And now I am simply using average. So if you see all these functions up here in the header, each one of them is used here. So this is the max, this is the min, this is the, you know, the sum, we got standard dev P and then we've got var P. And so it's pretty straightforward in how to use them, but I'm only using these text boxes. Now, uh, notice that for the text box itself, I am having this format as text, and I am having this format as number. I recorded this video once earlier and I trashed it because I was trying to get this thing to error out to show you something, but it looks like they may have done something to, I'll use air quotes, improve. Uh, could be a feature, you might consider it a bug, depending on what it is uh, that you're expecting to happen. But uh, in the context of this, because I had one value set uh, in one field formatted as a number, another one is formatted as text, it seems that when you're running these functions, it's automatically looking at the value coming in as a number. It doesn't seem to look at the data type, unless of course there's a character that it recognizes as, as a non-numerical value. So that being said, just be aware that each of these functions seem to, as long as you don't pass in some, I'll call it an illegal character, that is a non-numerical value this function will just work head straight on. Now, the other thing to understand is, is that max could also be choosing a data source and then specifying a column so that the entire data set, so if you had a table or a collection with a, I don't know, a, a maybe sales or age or something like that, you could run these aggregate functions over uh, that entire data set specifying that column and or multiple columns if if you so choose so just know that i used a very simple implementation of this but this is pretty much straightforward and if we dig into the documentation this is the information that i copied and pasted into this app and then put the function beside so you can see how it works as you can see it's giving just numerical formula one numerical formula two here's some examples of it there's not a whole lot of these examples uh, it's not much different than what I provided. They did one with a slider value to, to change all of this information up a little bit. I could have and should have done that a little bit as well, and then you would have seen all these numbers change. Um, but neither here nor there. This is what it is, and you can download this particular example if you want to dig into this a little bit deeper. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.